You don't have to be Pythagoras to understand this maths. Ten years ago, if you'd bought one Bitcoin for one dollar and then kept it, it'd now be worth $70,000. Not a bad return on investment. Of course, back then, highly speculative cryptocurrencies were an enormous gamble, but it seems no longer. Huge financial institutions like Visa and MasterCard, and even celebrated investors like Elon Musk, are now on board giving this once derided sector legitimacy. In turn, that's encouraged the tech boffins to invent even more out there ways to make a buck. For most of us, the world of cryptocurrency can seem more like a castle in the sky than actual bricks and mortar. But Sergei Sergenko has turned his crypto portfolio into a lot of bricks and mortar. Sergei. How are you, Tom? Good to see you. Likewise. Some sort of house you've got here. We we'll do what we can. <laughs> <laughs> this is the house that Bitcoin built, right? Some could say that, that's right. Let me show you around. Off to. Lovely fish tank. Yes. Sergey is worth an eye-watering hundred million dollars. Not a bad little chandelier. It's very difficult to clean, right? This is what we call first world problems. That's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> He's a member of the crypto rich. Early investors in Bitcoin turned overnight Aussie millionaires. Oh, what have we got here? What, what are these things? Segway drifts, I think. Dad, get those for you? Yeah. They're ordinary, everyday families cashing in on this digital gold rush. A fortune Sergey and his wife Eleanor could never have dreamed of in their former lives. So what was the first place you two had together? Uh, we lived at his mom's uh, granny flat, which was pretty small compared to now. But cryptocurrency changed this couple's life. As with many success stories, it began with a punt. After years of studying cryptocurrency markets, Sergey took out a bank loan and sunk pretty much all of it into Bitcoin. He's been buying and selling crypto ever since, making mega profits on his trading. A single Bitcoin is now worth more than $70,000. But that wasn't the case when he first started. Do you remember when you first bought a Bitcoin? Uh, I do, yes. It was, uh, I think it was in the vicinity of $6 or so. How many Bitcoin do you own now? <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it, it's more than three digits. So you've got more than 100 Bitcoin? You could say that, yeah. That's millions. That's right. Bitcoin is the poster child of the cryptocurrency sector and its meteoric rise. You could purchase one for just a dollar in 2011, but by 2015, their value had increased by 30,000%. That was only the beginning though. They increased from 300 each to more than 6,000 a Bitcoin by 2019. Some thought that might be the end, but from there, they really launched, jumping up to more than 70,000 this week as cryptocurrency went mainstream. 26% of Australians are now trading in crypto. I'm bullish on Bitcoin and on cryptocurrency because of that potential. And I think there are a lot of people like me. I feel like cryptocurrency really gets your blood pumping. <laughs> it does. Oh, it's, it's such a nerdy thing to like, be like, let's talk about economic policy. But I love it. Aussie Naomi Brockwell hosts a US TV show on future money markets. Why is this happening? It is a revolution. It's a financial revolution. And the reason that Bitcoin is a financial revolution is because it's decentralised. When you first heard about cryptocurrency, was uh, part of you a bit sceptical or were you all of a sudden ears pricked and super interested? I was super interested. When I learned about Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency, um, and I realised that this was an alternative financial system, that really excited me. The Dow woke up this morning with a downward tumble. Bitcoin launched off the back of the global financial crisis. The cryptocurrency seen as a way for people from all walks of life to trade without the usual market constraints. 
what I think was most devastating in 08 was you just saw all of these giant bailouts for banks and corporations and meanwhile the little guy was getting hurt and I thought well what if we had a system where the little guy was given more power what if we could democratize money what if we didn't have any central power in control and that really excited me. But crypto is no longer some niche novelty. Naomi's noticed a big shift in global perceptions towards it in the last 12 months. Major international corporations are now investing big time. Is a lot of the legitimacy that cryptocurrency seems to be gaining now because of the big businesses that are getting involved? I think that big businesses getting involved has definitely helped the perception of cryptocurrency. You have Tesla putting $1.5 billion into Bitcoin. You have companies like Visa and MasterCard offering cryptocurrency cards that people could pay their groceries with. This is now, I think we're going to see cryptocurrency as a more pervasive element in all of our lives. I think we're going to see more people buying their groceries with it, paying their bills with it, paying their rent with it. So did you pay for this with Bitcoin? Yes. Sergei Sergenko is one of those who lives off crypto. And he's taken me for a spin in his Tesla down to his local Maccas to show me just how easy it is these days. That's just a normal, just says Visa card. That's right. But That's that right. is actually you paying with cryptocurrency. That's right. That's right. If I didn't tell you, you'd think I'd buy a cash too. Thank you. Thank you. Is it you? First Bitcoin Coke. I feel like this is a history-making moment, Sergey. My friend, it is, it is indeed. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? Different? Crypto? Wow, tastes like <laughs> Coke like Zero. Crypto, yeah. <laughs> it isn't just the Macca's run that Sergey's doing differently these days, though. It's almost every aspect of his life. Nah, it's, it's very cool. But as far as, as far as paying for everything, well, I pay everything for it, right? So I pay like, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I paid school fees for that. With a, with a, with a car. With, with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Apparently cash is no longer king. What do you think when I give you that these days? This is something from the past and it's fast going away, right? Uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Cryptocurrencies are renowned for their wild price fluctuations and last month Bitcoin's value plunged more than 25% in the space of just two weeks. Now, many believe that the market became spooked amid speculation of greater government regulation of the industry, with some countries even discussing banning cryptocurrency use altogether. Some analysts suspect these are the early signs that the good times are coming to an end. We saw the UK financial regulator come out at the beginning of this year to warn investors that if they invest in cryptocurrencies, they should be prepared to lose all their money. Graham Shaw from Orbis Investments is what some crypto types might call an old school finance guy, believing traditional markets are much more dependable than new fads. He cautions that the current cryptocurrency market is grossly overvalued driven by lots of hype and little genuine understanding. So how much of this do you think is fueled by FOMO, that, that fear of missing out? I think quite a lot. Because people don't understand it and it sounds new and exciting, uh, it, it, you know, and other people have benefited from it, uh, it's like, oh, geez, should I? I don't really understand it, but it's doing so well. Why don't I join the game too? And you saw exactly the same kind of thinking in the internet bubble of 2000, where again, people said, look, I don't really understand these new internet companies, but they're going to change the world, and so I want to get in. That didn't end so well. And that didn't end so well. And the thing that history teaches us is that bubbles almost always burst. If your clients came to you and said, I want to put a fair whack of my savings into cryptocurrency, what would you say? Don't do it. That would be my advice, yeah. But cryptocurrency devotees like Sergey, unsurprisingly, don't share his concerns. He believes crypto is now simply too big to fail. So you're a smart guy. What are the chances of this all blowing up? Easy one in like 100 billion chance of that going down. And the reason being is because everyone's making too much money. Right. Everyone's motivated. Greed drives a lot. How much of the crypto world is driven by greed? Everything. When I agreed to do this, right, like I just said to myself, I'm not going to bullshit. And I'll just tell you how it is, right? There's a lot of people in here now for greed. So think of Wall Street coming to crypto. Not only does he believe crypto is here for the long haul, there's now another new sensation that he thinks will be a game changer.
It might not look like it, but in a strange way, you're watching me create something that investors are going crazy for right now. Like flash dance or John McEnroe or something. All right, let's go. You ready? Hey, we need to warm you up a little bit. Ready as I'll ever be. So we'll just, yeah, let's just try from here. So what I want to do is go here. Am I going the same way? Yeah, the same yeah. way as me. Bit of a fend. We'll fend this way yeah. and fend the other way. Along with my teacher, Maurice. One, two, three, forward, forward. We're using motion capture suits to record a dance that'll be turned into what's called a non-fungible token, aka an NFT. Let it go, step, step. By now, you're no doubt wondering, WTF is an NFT? Well, we've made a video, but they can be anything digital, like artwork or music or photos. The unique creations are then purchased using cryptocurrency. And in the last 12 months, the market has exploded. This simple artwork titled CryptoPunk fetched nearly $10 million. The creator of Twitter's first ever tweet was snapped up by a collector for $3.7 million. And this creation by the highly sought after artist Beeple holds the world record, auctioned for $89 million. Yeah, just make it flow. We're going to put an animation in there. OK. Easy. Cryptocurrency baron Sergei Sergenko is overseeing our NFT production and believes this will sell online for thousands of dollars. I think it's going to be awesome because I think this is going to be the first NFT created by commercial network and bringing it to crypto is absolutely epic. So I think we're going to kill it. This is the first in the world. Some people have compared it to the modern way of collecting baseball cards or something mm. like that. Is that fair? Yeah, it's very fair. I mean, baseball cards is another speculative market, much like NFTs. Sometimes you get people who are actually proper fans of the artist or collectors themselves in the real world. But for the most part, it's, it's driven by speculation. This man of mystery is Lush Sucks, a celebrated Melbourne street artist whose sometimes controversial murals have earned him a reputation as Australia's Banksy. But now he's transferring his talents from brick walls to computer screens. That's paying off big time. How much money are we, are we talking that you've made off NFTs? I'm predicting uh, at least four to five million this year on the low end. Dollars? Yeah, perhaps 10 if things go better, depending on the market, yeah. That's crazy money. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, these ones... Yeah, Lush has crazy. now become the most yeah. successful NFT creator in Australia, all in less than a year. These are just a few of his creations. He believes NFTs are currently at a point that cryptocurrency was about five years ago in terms of market scepticism. But he thinks it won't be long before they too go mainstream. Do you think you'll still be doing this in five years, ten years' time? I think so. I think I'll still be doing the NFT thing because it's just like the early internet or mobile phones and such. It's just it's not going anywhere, like the internet's not going anywhere and so forth, you know. It's exciting. I'm exploring like nostalgia again, collecting and, and also at the same time investing. Matty Sudegar turned an investment of $20,000 into one of the biggest NFT portfolios in Australia, collecting thousands of digital creations. You're investing in artworks, yeah? One of many things, yeah. So people traditionally would then think, put the art on the wall at home. How many of these have you got hanging at home? Zero. Where are they? They're all in my digital wallet. So they, I hang them in my virtual land, in central land, where we hold meetups and we hold conferences, and so I have my art on there. So one of my earliest pieces were... We took Matty to Milk Bar, a digital art gallery in Melbourne. So this is one of your Where he pieces. got to admire his collection properly for the first time. When I look at something like this, I think 
why couldn't I just take that picture and put it on a screen at my home? You can. You can capture it and put it on your wall, but you haven't captured what's called the collective value, right? So there's like a thousand digital recreations of the Mona Lisa um, and prints, but there's only one original. So in this case, the original is the token. It's the technology behind it. Visually, it looks like that, but the token is what I own, which allows me to trade um, among other people, other collectors. So in the end, it almost becomes a, a bit of a badge of pride because it, anyone could have a copy of that, but you've got the original. Exactly, exactly. And collectors, they want the original, right? That's what a collect demographic wants. But if you think all of this is a little bit crazy, wait until you hear about the money Matty's making. The returns has been a thousands of percent because at the start no one really believed in it. It was just a handful of people messing around with it. Now it's hit front position um, and there's just so much demand for the early stuff. Is there an element of people that, you know, at first were a bit cynical and now have come rushing back to you saying, okay, get me in? There is definitely people knocking on my door and saying, oh, Maddie, what's going on with this NFT space? NFT space is the Wild West. I'm a bit hesitant about NFTs because you see everyone diving in and I know that these people don't understand what they're getting involved with. Naomi Brockwell is a prominent advocate for investing in cryptocurrency, but she's much more cautious when it comes to NFT trading. So here's the thing, I think that the NFT world right now is a house of cards. I mean, a house of cards falls apart. That's what you think is going to happen here. Absolutely. Naomi's main concern at the moment is that there are lots of celebrities promoting the technology, trying to make a quick buck. So you have NBA players who are getting involved and baseball players and Paris Hilton and all these celebrities who are diving in and saying, this is the new mania. For me, that just screams bubble. That doesn't scream substantial. But once the House of Cards tumbles down, I think we'll figure out a more robust way to rebuild it because I do believe that NFTs are going to be a big part of our future. We just haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. Our foray into the world of NFTs was an eye-opener. Having created our own unique digital dance token, it sold online at auction this week for 11,000 US dollars, or 14,000 Aussie dollars. The profits have gone to charity. And Sergei Sergenko has some charitable advice for anyone thinking of dipping their toes into the world of cryptocurrency for the first time. It's not too late. Where do you think we are on the curve? How far into our crypto journey? The global crypto journey? Are we just starting? Might we literally, we didn't even put our underwear on after shower, if you want to compare it to that. Serious. So it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.